Okay. Uh, so I did not necessarily expect it to move in that direction and then to move so quickly. Uh, it wasn't super clear from them right there whether they're going to be coming back. Maybe we can, behind the scenes, get a little bit of clarity on that. Uh, but there's certainly some things to talk about. And, uh, man, these are not good earbuds. Anyway, uh, so this morning... There had been no word yet about whether they're ever going to seek the testimony of either Mike Pence or Donald Trump, despite the fact that, of course, both of them are two of the most important people in this. And now we're way past that. They're going to be trying to get, at the very least, Donald Trump. And isn't it weird, though, that they're they're not pushing for Mike Pence as of right now? Unless, unless it was on before I was on. Um, because Mike Pence, in theory, would be easier to get to agree to it because he wouldn't be implicating himself in the way that Donald Trump, in theory, might be. Uh, he wouldn't be as worried about it being damaging as damaging to his future career, because I don't know what Mike Pence has to worry about at this point. Um, and also, you could, in theory, expect Mike Pence to tell something like the truth, considering the content of what happened on that day. Whereas, and this will be a larger part of the conversation with Donald Trump, I, I don't really know what we should expect out of him uh, if the day actually comes, but... But that was fascinating. Okay, we're going to return to that in just one sec. But let's talk a little bit about some of the video uh, that we saw. A lot of this, maybe there were some videos that I hadn't seen before. I'm not entirely sure. A lot of it was basically what I remembered. But but I do like that they reiterated a couple of the core points about uh, the obvious linkage between what Donald Trump said or didn't say and almost immediate responses amongst the rioting group. So they did that. I mean... Like when he puts out an additional threat against Mike Pence, they instantly distribute that knowledge amongst themselves via the hive mind of the Trump cult. And then when he finally does say um, that that they should go, okay, they instantly knew that too. There were a few. I don't think they showed the video here, but they'd previously shown it. And I think it was an extension of that actual video where the guy with the horns was around. There was a woman who was like saying, no, that's not real. It's a deep fake or whatever. And there were a couple of the others saying, no, it appears to be real. So give them credit for an at least brief attachment to reality. So they, they laid that out. We knew that they wanted to get to the frame of mind of Donald Trump. And they did a good job in that. And one part of this that I want to focus on is that tweet that they showed that I had forgotten about. These, these are the things and events that happen. I mean... That is lit. It's gloating as the as people are still being carted to the hospital. It's this, this is what happens. It's the most kingpin statement I think I've ever seen. And and think about the gap between what Donald Trump's state of mind was at the end of January sixth and what everyone else's was. And I will even include most Republicans there. Like. Yes, there were some Republicans, Marjorie Greene, Lauren Boebert, who were like, no, I swear it's Antifa. It's Antifa. And for some reason, when Trump told them to leave, they instantly left. You know how Antifa is. They're so random. Um, but they reminded us that not just Mitch McConnell, who has never really loved Donald Trump, but Kevin McCarthy as well, and a bunch of people behind the scenes, they were so clear about Donald Trump's responsibility for what happened. Okay. And they might have been clear about that because it was freaking indisputable. That's possible. But more importantly, they were projecting to us an understanding of what they thought the state of the country was, how the country viewed what happened. And it is so important to remind people that it took a couple of weeks, a couple of months for the right to really reclaim for themselves the narrative of what January 6th was. You know, like now Tucker Carlson will just say it was a peaceful election fraud protest or something. And it's like, that's absolutely badass. We all know that. But they weren't saying that immediately. They seem to think at least those who were worried about potentially losing re-election or being considered to be an ally of the guy who posed the single greatest threat to democracy in American history ever. They didn't want to be brought down by that. So they were all making these public statements. Um, and so it's super important to remind people that whereas they were all at that point, he thinks we nailed it. We did it. This is great. Don't forget this day. And the thing is, while that's obviously incredibly damning for him, it's making him look super bad right now. At the same time, 
unless something comes of this, was he wrong to gloat? Like, remember, at this point, he'd already lost the presidency. The, the single greatest worst consequence to him that has ever happened to him in his life. So that had already happened. That's baked in. Okay. And maybe that's a consequence of like his non-response to COVID or something. So that's good. You like to see consequences. But for what he did on January 6th, okay, for the gloating about it, what consequences has he suffered? Now, there, there is one. There's one significant one. Do you know what it is? And it's not, it's not objectively a significant consequence, although from his point of view, it was a significant one. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I'll, I'll give you one additional second. Uh, while I say uh, to our behind the scenes team, I um, wasn't really able to jump in during the video there. So I have a little bit more to say. Can I go for like at least 10 more minutes or so? Is that okay, Asher? Uh, okay. Moms for Hot Hassan Piker nailed it. It was getting banned from Twitter. That was the one actual consequence that he suffered. And he doesn't like that. That's not ideal. Although, you know, now he's got True Central. And in theory, when Elon Musk eventually buys Twitter, he'll be back on it anyway. So that's a temporary consequence. And it's one that hurt him a little bit, but he's been okay. Other than that, what? So... Uh, despite telling all these obvious lies and despite losing in court dozens of times and despite dragging down even, like Rudy Giuliani with him, and they all look so terrible, what, is, what has happened to them that's been so negative? Um, they successfully passed a bunch of election suppression laws in multiple states. Uh, they dominated the primaries with uh, absolute maniacs who believe all of the same insane stuff about elections that they do. And uh, they took over some election boards, and uh, they're probably going to win some secretaries of state offices, and uh, they're probably going to take over some governorships, and that could be important in this role, too. So he was gloating. Some of the other Republicans were like, well, this is clearly past a line that we can't go past. And then, like, a couple weeks go by, a month goes by, and they all realize, oh, no, the voters are way past this line. Like, they wanted more. And now we enter into the area of speculation, but uh, if it had succeeded, okay, the political side, let's say the political side had succeeded, and they had just shown that you can just overrule an election and you could just give it to the person you want, what, what do we think would have happened? The Republican base would have freaked out. No, this is too far. Not like this. Not like this. No, they would have been perfectly fine with it. If it had succeeded on the other side, if they'd successfully stormed the Congress and they'd they'd hung Mike Pence and they'd beaten a whole bunch of Congress people to death or something like that, um, then what? Sean Hannity would come and do a monologue about like, no, this is this has gone too far. All of what actually happened on January sixth hasn't, in a durable long term sense, resulted in one inch of retreat from the fascist media figures that are that are buttressing Donald Trump and the MAGA movement. So why do we think that if they had if they had sent 300 cops to the hospital or if more had died or if they had killed someone or raped someone, what we think Tucker Carlson would take it seriously or something? No. All it would have done would put a little bit more of a fire under their ass to claim that it was Antifa or something like that. Like, the base was always going to be there. The base would be there if it was much worse. And that is why my my fears about future elections haven't changed in terms of, like, I don't like Lauren Bover, I don't like Marjorie Green, but appreciate them while they're the worst, because they're not going to be the worst for much longer. Arguably, there are candidates already in this cycle who are worse, and they're going to be worse. And the election violence is going to be worse. The protests, when they legitimately lose more elections, are going to be worse. The base not only supports Donald Trump and his lies, the base wants more. Because remember, this is not this is not a group of people, tens of millions, who are like willing, I guess, to support a fascist takeover of America. They want a fascist takeover of America for whatever reason. Insert a reason. Because gay books or something, or trans swimmers, or Dr. Seuss, I don't know, purple M&Ms. Insert whatever reason you want. 
They want this to go farther. They want more violence. Remember, when they shouted us month after month that the storm is coming and they want to see a reckoning, a lethal reckoning for their enemies, they still want that thing. They haven't gotten it. And they desperately want it. They haven't moved on from that. They want more. And when Donald Trump finally takes us further than that, they're going to be there waiting for him. And uh, I had a talk with Jackson White on the damage report this morning about these hearings, like how much people actually care about it. And Jackson said that a lot of people probably aren't prioritizing this in the same way they are other things, inflation, the economy, the war in Ukraine, stuff like that, Roe v. Wade. And I think that Jackson was totally right. But I also think that that sucks because... Is it going to be lasers again? It's going to be lasers again. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep talking because unlike Tucker Carlson, I don't need a teleprompter. So, uh, yeah, no, it's going to get worse and that's going to be terrible. And our ability as a people to ward that off is sort of contingent on us paying attention and or caring. And that is one of the reasons why I'm excited for the January 6th hearings, because it's like one of the only chances to make that happen, to get people to raise the shield a little bit. I understand that your arm gets tired in defending democracy and standing up for your rights and the ability of people to vote and for their vote to actually count gets tiring. But the others, the people on the other side of the shield, they're still there. They're still there. I wasn't super excited going into the January 6th hearings because I didn't really think that they would, they would do much. Um, and long term, that remains to be seen. But in making the case, I feel like they've made it about as good as they're going to. But that said, um, we, we need to return to what could potentially come from here. So they're gone. I don't. They're not coming back today, I guess. And I don't know. Are they coming tomorrow? Or are they coming next week? I would. I would love some clarity on that. And I'm not. And that's not to the behind the scenes team because I don't even know if it exists. I would love it from them. I would love a timeline. They clearly plan to do that testimony, although. It isn't clear to me from what Liz Cheney was saying. Did she ever explicitly say that she wants it to be live? I don't know for sure that she did. It would seem to be safer from their point of view to do it behind closed doors and to release whatever they want from it. Uh, for the same reason, I felt the same way with Ginny Thomas, which I turned out to be largely wrong. She said crazy things, but she didn't like literally just do a QAnon rant for the most part. And I felt the same way about Steve Bannon. Um, when you give these people a raw, unrestrained, unfiltered access to a lot of people's ears to tell them crazy things and make claims that they don't need to back up, that they don't need to be the evidence for, there is inherently a risk to that. And that, so I, I'm curious what you all think about Donald Trump. So they're going to do this supposedly. I, there might be bureaucratic or administrative obstacles that have to be passed. I don't know that does the DOJ need to get involved or I, there it's a special committee. I think they can just do it on their own. Is it a good thing if they have Donald Trump testify live before that committee and we'll cover it or whatever. Do you want to see that? I'm a little bit torn. I mean, my knee jerk reaction is, and I tried to restrain myself for the video but on the inside, I kind of felt like Alex Jones responding to the judgment against him being read out like, yeah, yeah, bring him in, bring him in, stick it to him. Because Donald Trump can do the stream of consciousness thing, but he also accidentally implicates himself constantly. I, I will remind you that Chris Matthews got him to say he wants the, the woman's got to be punished. If she has an abortion, the woman has to be punished. Um, and was it Lester Holt that got him to admit live in an interview that he fired Comey over the Russia thing? I didn't like the Russia thing, so I said we got to fire Comey. This dude implicates himself left and right, and th that doesn't matter to his base or whatever. But if you want to make a moment that maybe could cut through a news cycle, and remember, we're only a month away from the midterm, so I mean, I mean, when would this happen? Would this happen in a week? Would it happen in two? I mean. The longer the wait, the closer it is to the midterms. And the thing is, Donald Trump, you have to remember, is a GD idiot. And so actually doing this beforehand is super risky. And it's possible that his lawyers will be able to get through to him, okay? Especially considering all that's hanging over his head when it comes to the Mar-a-Lago documents scandal. 
it's possible that that he will get that like maybe I don't need to expose myself to this risk. But the dude also desperately wants to feel right. He can't be right on this, but he can feel right if people tell him he's right. He desperately wants people to applaud for him. Think about it. If they put the camera on him, it's going to be a big event. He's the guy that did the insurrection. There have already been tons of viewers on this. And that's without Donald Trump. He says he could draw a big viewership. That's what he wants. So there are huge risks to him in doing this. I'm like trying to come up with what the upside is. I guess he can inspire more violence, you know? If, if they if they have him live and he says, the election was stolen, you're all corrupt, I'm coming back, and when I get into the White House, I'm never leaving. He could say that stuff. There's no downside to him in terms of his base. That's what they want. They want a king for life. They want an incompetent man-child in the White House for life. Um, could it hurt him? I mean, <laughs> I guess amongst independents, maybe. Because the thing is, there's always this battle between doing what's necessary to fire up literally the craziest base that any politician or political movement has ever had in American history and actually winning an election. Um, and when I'm, when I'm like in a particularly pessimistic mood about America, the gap between those two things feels very small. And I think in general, it's not nearly as large as it should be. And yet, remember, Donald Trump did lose the 2020 election. Now, he lost that, I think, for a complicated mix of issues with COVID being perhaps the single largest. It was a matter of, of incompetence, basically. It is harder to imagine that as many people will care about his continued explicit, explicitly stated uh, war on democracy as got fired up over COVID. But that's not an insignificant number of people. And so were he to do the live testimony, he could maybe fire up some of his people, but he is also going to indisputably end up coming out looking really bad uh, from the point of view of actual sane people, so people who want there to be an actual democracy that, that like that little part of America. So I wonder if they're going to get it. Do we think, have we had a poll? Have we had a poll for either whether he should or whether he would like, are they going to actually do this? I don't know if I don't know if the team can see anything about if they've stated a timeline on that, um, but I would love to know that. Honestly, while I'm worried about the results of the midterms, um, there's there's some good things and there's some bad things, and I can acknowledge both at once. Even at the risk of some sort of late October surprise, I think I'd roll the dice on this. Britannic says he should have been questioned from the start. It is a little bit weird that we've gone this long. It's been it's been months. I mean, they did those hearings for weeks, and that was several months ago. It's weird. Well, the Supreme Court rejects Trump request to intervene in documents case. Oh, that's a different scandal. I'm sure we'll be talking about it on the damage report tomorrow, so I'm not going to go in depth there. I am a little bit surprised by that. You know, super fast tangent. Um, there, there's no reason to do this as a person in media or whatever. I really enjoy when I'm wrong in my like preconceptions about how something will play out. So I don't know if I actually predicted how they would rule on that, but my presumption would have been that there's probably at least a few that would love to save him in that way. That when he runs to daddy Supreme court, that they'll, you know, uh, take his uh, ham out of the fire or whatever the expression actually is. Does he have five? Clearly he does not. Okay. But I would love I would love to see the numbers. Oh wait, we do have a poll. Should Donald Donald J. Trump testify? Okay, so this is should. I don't love that wording. I kind of feel like will would be better. But let's go with should. That's fine. We'll do, we'll do should. Um, but by the way, uh, related on the Supreme Court. Look, I didn't look super deep into this, so it's possible that I am actually right and I don't know it. But I saw a headline. Okay, hold on. Oh, thank you, Asher. So Asher says info on subpoena. The panel is on a tight time frame. The subpoena will expire at the end of this congressional term. Okay, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't tell us when they want him to do it, unfortunately. Which I'm sure that information is not out, Asher. So don't worry about that. But I saw a headline about Kavanaugh ruling on an on something having to or like putting out a statement, I think, on something having to do with overtime. 
And I was like, oh, yeah, I bet they love cutting back over time. I bet they love it. And I think I haven't super looked into it yet. I'm going to for tomorrow's show. I think it was actually the issue they had was that some workers were being excluded from it. So I like being wrong. I want to be wrong. I'm not actually 100% sure if I'm wrong on that, but I like being wrong. But anyway, um, okay, so if Donald Trump actually testifies, the most likely outcome, according to my gut, bearing in mind that I'm generally wrong about literally everything, um, and perfectly content with that, I hope that you're comfortable with that too, is that he will come out, he will restate a bunch of election lies, he will potentially, I'm going to say 40% chance directly implicate himself in what happened on January 6th. And then the question will be, does that influence the only truly important thing coming out of this? I'm, I'm setting aside the influence that it might have on the election, which it might have a little bit. Because remember, he is going to remind people of who he is and what he stands for if he testifies. For better and or for worse. He's going to do that. And remember, like, approval for Joe Biden, negativity towards Trump, I don't believe has ever been as low as it was as when people could not help but think of uh, election violence when they thought of Trump. So he's going to be reminding people of that. But the only truly important consequence coming out of this is whether they actually have charges. And I'm really torn on that. Because Merrick Garland, what was it like, six weeks ago now? He was talking a big game in this interview about theoretically being ready to go he was also trying to present uh, a bit of a gap between himself and the January 6th committee. Like, I don't, I don't need to follow their lead or whatever. They can do their investigation, but I can do my investigation. But he was trying to make us think that it is a possibility. I don't, will, will this extra information potentially influence him? I don't know. They got all that information from the Secret Service. And I'm assuming that whatever they got, Merrick Garland is also at least looking at, if not directly receiving. So of all the things that could potentially influence Merrick Garland and potentially push him one way or the other, is there anything on the level of a Donald Trump testimony? Because think about it. If he were to come out and he were to say, you know, uh, that was a dark day. I think that we can all agree on that. And, uh, you know, I... I have a lot of issues with what happened in the election and I still have those issues, but obviously we don't support violence and I wanted people to have their voices be heard, but I never wanted there to be actual violence. And, you know, thank God that the people who broke the law, even if they thought that they were doing my will, which they weren't because it wasn't my will, they're going to jail. So that's good. Um, and hopefully nothing like this will ever happen again. I, I don't feel, per I have to be honest, I don't feel personally responsible because I never said they should go, but it was terrible that it happened. No, but seriously, like I'm not trying to give him advice or whatever, but can we all agree how damning that would be were he to tell those lies. <laughs> like if he was to testify and he were to tell those lies, his opening statement, like they'd continue to hit him and everything. But if he was actually like, he presented himself as being sad about what happened. I don't know. I don't know. It would hurt the case against him. It would probably also hurt him amongst his base. Cause again, remember these people, these people want to be told that the war is about to begin the war against the Democrats, the war against people of color, whatever they want to hear that the shooting is about to start. So anyway, we've, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes. Um, but anyway, I, I really want to know if there's going to be more, I, I guess, I guess I, I don't know that there needs to be like, if the next step is our final act, which is actually having Trump here and grilling him. I don't know. In comparison to that, what else would there be, I guess? You're going to show some more video of the rioters. We've we've all largely seen that. You've shown that his whole ring of goons and henchmen, um, which are different things, watch She-Hulk, they explain the difference, um, are not participating in the investigation. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it would be something, but it would, it would honestly probably undercut the effect of just having Trump testify. And so... I guess I have to assume that that's probably it for now until we get clarification on whether he's going to. I'm going to reload the True Central. Uh, okay, so he bleated about inflation. Okay, he tweeted about leaders of foreign countries. 
I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. He tweeted about inflation. Wait. Okay. So he did. My God, this dude is on social media all day long. Okay, so he sent out something from the Daily Caller about Cassidy Hutchinson. And I believe this is the only reference to anything having to do with January 6th that he sent out. It says, uh, let's see, something about Cassidy Hutchinson sending messages about working at the Schlaps. Okay. Something about her being asked to come before the committee. I don't, I don't know what he thinks. So... I th look, you can go on True Central and you can see it. It's her saying something about like not wanting to get wrapped up in this BS or something. Okay. What is that supposed to like? But we saw it was like months ago that she testified, buddy. That happened a really long time ago. She already said all the things she's going to say. Maybe she thought the process was BS. She still said what she said. What does that even mean? And let's say that we, we proved that she was lying about everything that she revealed. Okay. Okay. You, uh, what, what about the, what about what actually happened? I don't, I don't understand these people. And the thing is like, it's nonsensical. It doesn't mean anything. It's already getting likes and retweets. Like you, there's nothing so stupid that these people will not absolutely eat it up. And the thing is, that's nice to have for him in a way, but it also leads to any amount of bad behavior. Because you do things knowing that they'll respond well to it, but they're not the only people that matter. And when he has to decide whether to testify, is he going to think about the damage it could do to other Republicans, the damage it could do to him amongst independents, the damage it could do to him vis-a-vis -vis Ron DeSantis in looking unreasonable and like he might lose again? Or is he going to be thinking about these people? and wanting to get someone with a Pepe the Frog avatar to hit the like button on True Central.